Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. I just have a real quick mini video for you guys today just to, you know, wish all of you a happy holidays and Merry Christmas and whatever you celebrate on this holiday season. Thank you guys so much for being supporters of the Historic Travels channel and, oh, hold on a second. I did a community post where I asked you guys if you guys wanted me to film a Christmas special. But the topic that would be involved in making the Christmas special would involve me losing several more of my brain cells. And I don't think you guys would want me to go through that. I really don't. I mean, it's the holiday season. It's Christmas. You guys wouldn't want me to suffer on Christmas, would you? Would you? <sighs> I should probably check that community poll. Really guys, why? Just why? Like, why do you want me to do this to myself? I mean, I was gone for so long and I'm back for the holidays and this is what you guys want. All right, well, you know what? In the spirit of the holiday season, you all win. So sit back and relax as we do another Historic Travels Bright Side reaction video. I hope you enjoy. Hey everybody, so once again, welcome back to my office. This is the room where I edit most of my videos in. Okay, so I've already got the video selected that we're gonna be watching today and you should be able to see my screen right now. Okay, so the video we're gonna be taking a look at is this one right here. What happened to the other two Titanics? And I do have the video already pulled up and ready to go right here. Okay, now first impressions based on the thumbnail and the title. What I think they're going to be discussing in today's video is the Titanic sister ships, the Olympic and the Britannic. I am, a, it's a little cringe that they're referring to them as the other two Titanics, but I know why they did that because most people, unless you're into ships, don't know that the Olympic, the Titanic and the Britannic were referred to as the uh, Olympic class liners. So this is just their way to let people know that there were other ships like the Titanic. Uh, the thumbnail is a little cringe to me. I mean, they have the Titanic with a big X through it, and I'm assuming that's because of the sinking. But they have another model of the Titanic, which I'm assuming they're using as the Olympic, and they're talking about that. But the third ship, which I'm assuming is the Britannic, why do they have it look like a ghost ship or a specter, like, um, like the Britannic or something like that? Why do they do that? Maybe it's a way to hint that the ship sunk. That would make sense because the Olympic looks fine. Still, could you not... That's still kind of cringe to me that you're referring to the other sunken Olympic class liner as a ghost ship or whatever, but anyway. Okay, so, uh, I mean, I have some hope that this might be a better video, and taking a look at when the video came out seven months ago, okay. So maybe this video will be better. You know, um, I have some hope that this might be a better bright side video. Uh, let's see if they step up their game. I mean, based on the thumbnail, it's a little cringy, but hmm. All right, let's give it a shot. Ready? Here we go. Everyone knows the story of the Titanic, but not many people know that Titanic had two sister ships and that on the night of its sinking, one of them was rushing to help, but did Hey, look at that, guys. They actually, like, this is still a real cringy animation of the Titanic sinking, but they actually got the breakup point right. Just forward of the third funnel. That's actually where the Titanic broke into. We're 10 seconds in and I paused it for a compliment. So uh, we're off to a good start. Didn't make it in time. Bad luck seemed to follow the trio of ships, but each one of them had glorious moments that live in the minds of those who sailed in them. Keep on watching to discover a story of awe, ingenuity, and ill fate. Uh, guys, look right here. Look at this beam right here. It's all distorted. Is there a filter here or something? Hold on, let me go back. Let's take a look at that again. Watching to discover a story of awe. Yeah, look, 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 look. You can see the thing moving and being twisted. Why would you do that? Why would you put like a weird magnifying glass or like twisting thing right there? Okay, whatever. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and turn notifications <laughs> on to join us on the bright side of life. Ah. 
<laughs> they did not. They did not say subscribe to us to join us in the bright side of life. How cheesy can you be? Like, guys, don't subscribe to this channel. I guarantee you by not subscribing, you will be on the bright side of life. <laughs> okay, okay, guys, how would you, what would you think if I did it? Hey guys, make sure you subscribe to the Historic Travels YouTube channel to be on the bright side of life. I can't, I can't, I can't. Just, just, just forget that I ever said that, please. And guys, please don't meme this. <laughs> okay, okay, moving on. You know how the iceberg hit the Titanic. The iceberg did not hit the Titanic. The iceberg was stationary. The Titanic hit the iceberg. Small thing, but moving on. Band played to the end, and how the whole tragedy unfolded, but before... Titanic has red funnels, so it's a canard ship again. Okay, moving on. Before it happened, it would have seemed an impossibility for such. And now Titanic looks normal. The ship to meet the end it did. None of that could have been foreseen by White Star Line, the company who built the Titanic. Okay, so I didn't catch this in that moment, but when they said that the White Star Line was the company that built the Titanic, that is incorrect. The White Star Line was the company that owned the Titanic. The ship was actually built by the shipbuilding company known as Holland & Wolf, located in Belfast, Ireland. Who had high hopes for what the unsinkable ship and its sister ships, the Britannic and the Olympic, would accomplish. Guys, they actually got... All of the ships right. Look, look at that. They got Britannic labeled right. Awesome. They got Olympic labeled right. Awesome. And this image right here, I am like 90% certain that that is Titanic under her final stages of construction. I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain that that is Titanic. I'm just the, the, the uh, ADEC promenade isn't enclosed yet, but uh, double check me, but I'm think, I think that is Titanic, but yeah. The Olympic was the first of the trio to make sail on June 11th, 1911, heading towards New York. Wasn't it a little later than that? I thought it was like June 14th or something. It might have been June 11th, I'm not sure. But it was June, so. The sheer size of it would wow the crowds. The Olympic's maiden voyage went without it. <laughs> Are you serious right now? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Can you? Eh, you can't see it. Okay. Guys. They're doing great with the photos and everything so far. Which ship is this? Hmm? Which ship is this? They're talking about the Olympics Maiden Voyage, okay? A ship that has tons, and I mean tons of photographs of, all out on the internet. There's tons of photos of the Olympic. What ship is this? I'll give you a hint. It's a ship that sunk pretty early into her career, and there aren't a lot of photographs of her. This is Titanic. See the promenade deck right there? The enclosed promenade? This is Titanic. So they actually took an image of the Titanic and used that for the uh, for the Olympics uh, main voyage. Um, okay, so they got the ships mixed up there, but anyway, so this is Titanic, not Olympic. Voyage went without incident, and a crowd of 8,000 people in New York got to explore its luxurious accommodations while it was docked there. There were high expectations. Did they do that? Did they let people toward the Olympic in New York? I didn't. I thought they did that in Liverpool. Like when the Olympic uh, left Belfast, I think she went to Liverpool for a brief time, like one day. And or maybe I'm thinking of Lusitania. No, it's not Lusitania. It, I think it was Olympic. Yeah, it went to Liverpool for a day to let people tour, and then it went to Southampton. Double check me, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Expectations for the massive ship, but just around two months later, the Olympic crashed with the HMS Hawk. The hawk got the brunt of the damage as the bow was left When did flat. the hawk collision happen? Hold on, I want to double check that. Uh, Google, when was the collision between Olympic and the HMS hawk? Uh, September, so June, July, August, so three months later. Okay, I mean, not quite right, but okay, close enough, so. Huh, all right, I mean, not bad so far, not bad so far. Moving on. As a pancake. Hawk got the brunt of the damage as the bow was left flat as a pancake. After the crash, the Olympic made its way slowly back to Belfast, where the Titanic was being constructed. On the dock, people could hey, see the Hey, look at that! Look at that! They got the ships labeled right. Olympic and Titanic. Very cool. Enormous ships Wait a minute. Hold on. 
Was this photo... Okay, so, all right, all right. Small detail, small detail. But this time the two ships were together, this wasn't after the Hawk collision. When the Olympic went back the first... So the Olympic went back to Belfast twice while the Titanic was there. And after the Hawk collision, the Titanic was still early into her fitting out process. I believe there was only one funnel on the Titanic at the time. This time was the second time that the, when this photo was taken, this was the second time the Olympic and the Titanic were together. And under this case, the Olympic threw a propeller blade. This happened shortly before the Titanic's maiden voyage. So, I mean, they're close, but some of the details are still off with the photograph and everything, but 99% of people wouldn't notice. But yeah, that's a small thing. Anyway, there you go. See the two in They one. still have the two ships uh, named right. So, good job, right side ships side by side as parts of the titanic were used to put the olympic back in shape a rare sight to behold hold on what i've actually never seen that photograph before that's cool i've never seen this photograph before very interesting hmm. a rare sight to behold and on april 14 1912 the titanic hit an iceberg and minutes later, the crew radioed nearby ships for help. It was more like, like 40 minutes later, but okay, whatever. That night, the Olympic was returning from New York when it received the distress signal. The ship turned around and rushed at full speed towards the Titanic. Did the Olympic have to turn around? I didn't think it passed. Like, I know the Olympic was very far away. I think it was like 400 miles or so. But I thought that the Titanic was ahead of it. I didn't think the Olympic had passed it. I thought they had just had to change course slightly and they were still heading towards it. Uh, double check me there, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Anyway. But they were so far away that they would have arrived next night. At some point during the early hours of April 15th, 1912, the crew of the Olympic decided they wouldn't make it in time and stopped course. The survivors... What? What? No, that's not... No. Okay, the way you put it in this video, you act like the Olympic just stopped. Like, oh, we're not going to make it on time. So, you know, whatever. Forget Titanic. We're, we're, we're out of here. No, that's not what happened. So, it is true that the Olympic wouldn't have made it in time. But what actually happened was they messaged the Carpathia and asked the Carpathia, um, do you want us to come and pick up the Titanic survivors? And the, the crew on the Carpathia considered this, but what happened was they checked with Jay Bruce Ismay, the head of the White Star Line, and he was on board, and asked him, do you want the Olympic to come and pick these people up? But he said, no, don't, because he was worried that the survivors of the Titanic would have, like, you know, panic attacks and freakouts if the near-identical sister ship to the Titanic pulled up to pick them up. And I mean, honestly, I get that. That makes sense. How would you all feel if, you know, you just survived the sinking of the Titanic and its identical twin pulled up to save you? I mean, that would scare people half to death, I'm sure. So, yeah, the Olympic didn't just go, yeah, we're not going to make it. Just forget Titanic. No, 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 that's not what happened. But Ugh, Close, but no cigar, bright side. The Titanic were eventually rescued by the Carpathia. Olympic was set up with lifeboats for all crew and passengers after the Titanic sank. It went from having 20 lifeboats... I'm pretty sure this is a photo of a uh, Titanic taken by Father Brown. I'm pretty sure that's what this is, but anyway. It went from having 20 lifeboats to 64. Okay. Changes were also made to the watertight bulkheads and an extra hull. To construct a type of double hull was installed. It was determined... Yeah, so they added an additional uh, watertight bulkhead to the Olympic after the Titanic disaster during one of its, um, during one of its dry docks. Um... Bright side, seriously, what is it with you guys in showing the Titanic with a full moon? There was no moon that night. What is it with you guys in doing that? <sighs> the double hull would have kept the Titanic from sinking for several years. Okay, so they said that a double hull would have prevented the Titanic from sinking. I'm not sure about that. So I might be wrong about this, but I recall hearing, I think it was a documentary or I heard this somewhere. But I remember hearing a long time ago that the White Star Line was a little bit worried about collisions and stuff like that with ships. It might have been after the Hawk collision. Um, I just, again, don't take this 100%. This is just something I heard. I, I need to double check this. But I thought that in this area right here, just pretend this is Titanic, okay? In this area right here, 
they actually did put something there like a double hull on Titanic. Like they were a little bit worried about collisions and stuff like that. So in this area, there was something like a double hull, like extra reinforcement or something. I thought they put something there to make that area stronger because they were thinking if something was going to puncture the hull, it'd be right there because if the ship would probably hit something in the front. Uh, but even despite that, the ship was still damaged by the iceberg and it still sank. So listen, the amount of force and damage with that iceberg impact, I mean, it was absolutely insane. So I'm not sure if a double haul would have helped it in that situation, but yeah, again, that's something that I think I heard somewhere, but yeah, double check me. Hull to construct a type of double hull was installed. It was determined that a double hull would have kept the Titanic from sinking. Debatable. For several years, Olympic was used in the war effort against Germany. Hey! Throughout the years, so, it is true that Germany was uh, one of the enemies during World War I, but I think it'd be more accurate to say, like, the Central Powers, but whatever. Olympic carried over 200,000 passengers, which included thousands of Americans fleeing from Europe and troops battling during World War I. One of the most significant moments for this ship was when it struck a German submarine and sank it. It was discovered that the submarine was preparing to fire a torpedo on Good the Olympic job. before Olympic rammed it. The Olympic ended up sailing the seas for three decades, which earned her the nickname of the Old Reliable. Yes, they got it! Good job! It went on to help the survivors on the HMS Audacious when it was sinking. Double check that ship name because I'm not 100% certain if that's right. I do vaguely remember hearing that the Olympic helped the ship that was sinking, and it might have been that, but double check. And do what it couldn't for its sister. <laughs> Did you? Okay, so... Guys, all right, so this right here, this real cheesy animation of a lifeboat going up, okay? They edited a uh, a photo taken by Father Brown when he was getting off the Titanic in uh, Queenstown. And look right there, there's Captain Smith overlooking, um, looking down from the Titanic. So they just really cheesily animated this. But yeah, this is a photo of the Titanic that they edited and butchered. Eventually, bad luck caught up with the other. <laughs> the ship crashed with the Nantucket lightship, and the crash signaled the beginning of the end. <laughs> Can I just say that that's a real cheesy way to uh, animate the Nantucket lightship collision? So, in case you don't know, the Olymp um, the Nantucket lightship, those are lightships that are positioned on both sides of the Atlantic, and it's how they, it's how they time a voyage, okay? So, when a ship passes one light ship on the other side of the Atlantic, they start the timer, and then when it passes the other light ship on the other side, it's they end the time. That's how they measure the time of the voyage and everything. And anyway, there was a fog one day, and the Olympic was, I think it was steaming into New York. But anyway, it hit one of the light ships and sunk it. So that is right. That is accurate history. But this is just a real cheesy way to animate that. So they have a black and white photograph of a Nantucket light ship, and then they just took her modern day video of some other ship and had it sailing ship, towards it so and the crash signaled the beginning of the end what beaten up and after years of service the olympic was demolished and scrapped for parts did you have to word it like that the old reliable saw many years of service and thousands of passengers but the britannic's journey was <laughs> It has to be, but... Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> um, okay, wait, wait, wait. Jumping back to Olympic for a second, I want to clarify something. Um, the reason the Olympic was retired... Uh, the Olympic was old. You know, she was old by the time that she was retired and everything. But it was after the crash of 29. So the Olympic really wasn't profitable anymore. But, and, you know, people weren't traveling as much, and the economy was in shambles. But as far as the condition of the ship, I believe the Olympic was still in fairly good condition at the time of her retirement. You know, the Nantucket light ship collision definitely didn't cause the ship to need to be... <laughs> that wasn't the reason why the Olympic was retired. I mean, the ship, you know, she was fine. She was fine. She just, she wasn't profitable anymore. She wasn't, you know, needed anymore. And there were a lot more modern ships that were in service and everything. And they just, the Olympic just wasn't needed. And by scrapping the Olympic, it brought 100,000 jobs to people who desperately needed it because of the Great Depression. 
So, yeah, the Olympic was scrap and all that, but it wasn't like she was completely run down, decrepit vessel or whatever. I mean, she was, the way I understand it, she was still in okay condition considering how old she was. She just, she wasn't needed and her scrapping brought 100,000 jobs. So, I mean, it was the right decision at the time. But on a selfish note, I do wish they would have saved her. You know, the historian in me wishes the Olympic was still around just like the Queen Mary, but... If I had lived in that time period, I would have also wanted her to be scrapped, you know, for work. Especially if I was one of those husbands and I had a wife and child to feed. So, I get it. But the Britannic's journey was shorter lived. When the Titanic sank... Oh, oh. They're, they're resorting to AI art now. Anyway. White Star Line was faced with a problem since they already had another enormous ship in the works. White Star Line began construction on the HMHS Britannic on November 30th, 1911, around four months before the Titanic sank. I'm not sure if that's right. I think they did start Britannic's construction a little bit before Titanic left, so, um, yeah, but anyway. Although the Britannic was the youngest of... <laughs> Show an image of Britannic! There are photos! What is that? the trio of ships having been constructed last it was also the biggest they intended to name it gigantic <laughs> okay um i was distracted by the ai art for a second so they're just going crazy with the ai art now um as far as the gigantic thing goes that is a rumor that is a rumor and i'm pretty sure uh oh hi Hi, buddy. How are you doing? I'll be running off. Uh, I'm watching one of my family's cats right now, and she just wandered into the room. Anyway, so um, as far as the gigantic thing, I think it has been proven that that was never going to be the case. I'm pretty sure some plans, like on the original plans of the ship, it always said Britannic, not gigantic. Like there isn't anything anywhere that says gigantic. If I'm wrong about that, please correct me, but I'm pretty sure that it's been like 99% proven that the White Star Line was never going to name it Gigantic, but anyway. So, uh, yeah, they are going crazy with the AI art now. And uh, Britannic has three funnels and three masts at the front. Huh, okay. Um, but after the Titanic's disaster, they changed the name to Britannic since they considered it to be a lucky name. Uh, Okay, well, I already talked about all that. I'm pretty sure it was never going to be named Gigantic, but whatever. With the Titanic sinking, the White Star Line underwent rigorous investigation, and many changes were made to the Britannic's design. The Britannic looked very similar to the Titanic. Please, enough with the AI art. <sighs> and it had what was at the time the largest marine turbine in the world, able to reach faster speeds than the Olympic. With Titanic's fate. Is that true? I mean, she had the one uh, low pressure turbine in the central prop, but her other two engines were reciprocating engines, just like Olympic and Titanic. I didn't think it was going to be any faster. I thought it'd be the same, but uh, okay. Fresh in their minds, everything possible was done to ensure the safety of this newer ship. The Britannic was eventually launched on February 26th, 1914, almost two years after. Um, guys? <laughs> um, okay, well, number one, that launch is the wrong way. The Britannic was eventually launched on February 26, 1914. Um, they were launched stern first, not bow first. And also, with this, I'm pretty sure they just edited uh, footage of the Olympic launch and then just twisted around. So there is video of the Olympic launch from what I believe is this angle, but you see the Olympic going backwards. And I think they just took that still video and then just made it go forward. And they're saying it's Britannic. Okay. Okay. So I did go and look into this when I was editing the video and I did forget one important detail about the Olympics launch, which is the footage you're watching right now. The Olympic was painted white, so she would show up better in the cameras during her launch. The ship in that bright side animation or whatever clearly wasn't painted white. So I'm not sure if they took a still image of Titanic or Britannic and edited that whatever animation you saw earlier. But yeah, I was wrong about them using the Olympic footage. Just wanted to clarify that. After the Titanic's disaster, the White Star Line wanted the Britannic to redeem their name. The Britannic was on its way to becoming a successful sh 
Okay, so for a second, I thought that this was a thing of Britannic. But again, it's more AI art. Like, look at this. Look at the look at the front right here. Look at that curve. That looks like uh, Lusitania or something. That's not right. Uh, I do see the gantry davits. They look right, I guess. Everything else. Like, I thought that this was a legit thing for Britannic for a second. What's This doesn't look right to me. Let's, uh, yeah, this doesn't look right, so... Okay, so I did go and look at the original Britannic advertisement poster. That's what you see right here. And what I think happened was they tweaked the design of this image a bit and put it in the bright side video. So take a look right here. This is the bright side animation. You can clearly see that there are differences between this image and the original Britannic advertisement image, especially around the bridge area. It looks a lot more curved here for some reason, so I think they took the original Britannic advertisement image and then ran it through an AI and tweaked it a bit, and that's what threw me off. It's really weird. Ship. It transported passengers for over a year and a half when the British government requisitioned it and turned it into a hospital ship. During the beginning of war... Is this just a filter, or what's going on here? Like, look at, like, what, what's happening? Like, look, what's up with the bridge? What's up with the wheelhouse? What's, what's the, what's, I don't know what they did here. This is, this is weird. World War I, the ship became an even more impressive sight to look at. It was painted all white, with enormous red crosses on its side to indicate it was a hospital ship. One of the ship's surgeons, Dr. J.T.H. Beaumont, thought of it as the most wonderful hospital ship that ever sailed the seas. It could treat as many as 3,309 patients. I have no idea if these numbers are right or if that surgeon is a person, so we'll just go with that. I don't know anything about any of that stuff. Once, this is how the Britannic became His Majesty's Hospital Ship, or HMHS Britannic. Though Wait, the did they say that it was only going to be a hospital ship? Hold on, let me let me go back. Let me go back. The Britannic was on its way to becoming a successful ship. It transported passengers for over a year and a half when the British government requisitioned it and turned it into a hospital ship. Wait, the what? Of World War One. No, 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 no. The Britannic never operated as a passenger liner. No, she didn't. She was only ever a hospital ship. They they needed her, so when they were building Britannic, you know, they were still going through the work, World War I broke out. Yeah, World War I broke out. And um, so they used it as a hospital ship. You know, they, they were working on turning her into a passenger liner, but that never happened. She was never a passenger ship. She was only ever a hospital ship. And then there were times where they tried to convert her back to a passenger ship, but then they just never, they always needed her. They always needed her to be a hospital ship. She was never a passenger liner. She never was. She never was. Okay. World War I. The ship became an even more impressive sight to look at. It was painted all white with enormous red crosses on it. This looks like floating sandbox. ...its side to indicate it was a hospital ship. One of the ship's surgeons, Dr. J.T.H. Beaumont, thought of it as the most wonderful hospital ship that ever... Again, I don't know anything about that guy or he said that, 3,309 so. patients at Again, once. I'm not sure. This is how the Britannic became His Majesty's Hospital Ship, or HMHS Britannic. The well, sight of this at least they got the name right. HMHS Britannic. Magnificent ship must have put a smile on a wounded soldier's face or two. The Britannic didn't operate for long. Just a year after it was turned into a hospital <sighs> ship, the Britannic was making its way through the Aegean Sea to pick up wounded soldiers when it was struck by a loud explosion. <laughs> really? Is that how you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did Britannic get hit by a massive missile or something? That's not, that's not how the mine explosion was, but okay. The passengers didn't know what had happened, but uh. headed to the deck to disembark. It is unclear what hit the Britannic, but the general consensus is that it was struck by a mine left by a German U-boat, though some still believe a torpedo hit it. It, it has been basically proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was a mine that sunk the Britannic, not a torpedo, because we do know that there was a U-boat in the area. It was in the Kia Channel. We do know that there was a U-boat in that area shortly before the Britannic steamed through it, dropping mines. So, yeah, we're, we're fair. We can't say 100% for certain, but it's mostly confirmed that it's uh, it was a mine. And tried to move the ship to a beach close by, but the ship was sinking fast. In the desperation, against the captain's orders... Do 
you have to use that Titanic thing, but hang on here. I want to see if they get Captain Bartlett's story right. Hold on. In the desperation against the captain's orders, several crew members launched lifeboats and disembarked. But since the ship was moving and the propellers working... Not the right propeller. The lifeboats were sucked and destroyed by the propellers. <laughs> okay, so they got that backwards. I mean, okay. So, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So let's, um, let's, 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 let's play through the events of, um, the lifeboat getting into the propeller as from bright side. Okay. So I'm going to explain to you the propeller that got sucked into the, or I'm sorry, I'm going to explain to you the lifeboat that got sucked into the Britannic's propeller from the perspective of bright side. Okay. The lifeboat leaves from the Britannic starboard side. Okay. And then it somehow gets clear of the Britannic. Like, so this is the Britannic's rudder. Okay. Okay. Right here. And then the Britannic Captain Bullet turns the ship's engines into reverse and sucks the propeller right in or sucks the lifeboat right in. Yep. Yeah, that's not what happened. That's not what happened at all. So, um, for those of you that don't know, there were two lifeboats launched from the Britannic's port side without Captain Bartlett's permission. The ship was moving forward towards the Kia Channel. Or no, they're not towards the Kia Channel. Towards the island of Kia, okay? And as those lifeboats were, you know, getting, um, tr leaving the ship, you know, the Britannic was moving right beside them, these boats got sucked into the propeller. That's what happened. The boats were basically stationary, the ship was moving past them, and it sucked the boats in. That's what happened, so. Though so much effort had gone into ensuring that uh. it was safer than the Titanic, whatever explosion occurred left the Britannic in the same dire condition. Why are you using these filters? As the Titanic, in just 10 minutes. In, a in 15 minutes. 15 minutes is more accurate. In 15 minutes, Britannic was in roughly the same condition of Titanic after, what, 45 minutes to an hour? Somewhere around there. Cruel twist of fate. It also sank in the ocean. Unlike what else would it sink in? In a cruel twist of fate, the Britannic sank in the ocean. Well, no kidding, Sherlock. I mean, what? Oh, uh, the, the Britannic sank in lava. The Britannic sank in lava. <laughs> Where explosion occurred, left the Britannic in the same dire condition as the Titanic in just 10 minutes. In a cruel twist of fate, it also sank in the ocean. Unlike Titanic's enormous death toll, <sighs> only 30 people perished in the sinking of the Britannic. Okay, so that's right. And over 1,000 survived. Okay. So many people survived because the accident happened in the morning when the temperature of the water was warmer and the Greek island Kea was close by to offer help. I'm not really sure if that has any... It wasn't the fact that the water was warmer. I mean, the water temperature definitely did play a role, but it was also due to the fact that the gantry davits, the electric crane davits, were on the Britannic, able to get everybody off, and the ship wasn't carrying passengers at the time or, you know, patients. She was on her way to pick up patients. So it was just, you know, crew on board for the most part. And, um, yeah, the water temperature really wasn't... I mean, it was warmer, but I don't think it was just the water temperature that made sure everybody survived. It did help, but there were a lot of other factors. In the end, the Britannic only sailed the seas for over two and a half years. The bad luck that followed the Titanic and the Britannic and the accidents and demise of the Olympic was remarkable. But what was most impressive is that there was a woman who sailed on all three ships. And Are they going to get her name right? Are they going to get her name right? Survived. Violet Jessica. Yes! Yes! The ship. They did it! The they did it! 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 Hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me hear what they said. Let me hear what they said. Three ships and survived. Violet Jessup was a crew member and nurse aboard the ships. I don't think she was a nurse. She was a crew member on Olympic and Titanic, but I don't think she was a nurse on Britannic. Uh, I'm pretty sure Tom Linsky said something about that. I'm not 100%. I don't recall what she was doing, but I'm fairly certain she wasn't a nurse. Uh, double check me, guys. Nurse aboard the ships. She was there when the Olympic collided with the HMS Hawk in 1911 and disembarked safely. Two years later, she escaped the sinking of the Titanic in lifeboat number 16, and she showed some... Is that her boat? I'm not sure. ...women it was safe to board the lifeboats. You'd imagine that would be enough to keep her from ever getting on a boat again, but not for her. A few years later, she served as a nurse in the Britannic while it was used as a hospital ship. We talked about that. When the explosion occurred, Violet jumped overboard. No, she didn't! ...and hit her head on the 
keel but survived. Can you no, she did. She was actually in one of the boats that got sucked into the propeller, but the propeller, like uh, the propeller, missed her, and she got, you know, she got pushed clear, and then she did hit her head on something. I, I guess it was one of the lifeboats, but she had a really bad concussion, and I'm pretty sure she would suffer headaches for the rest of her life. But no, she didn't try to jump overboard. Imagine her experience. She must have had nerves of steel. She did. All in all, the trio of ships saw journeys of triumph and tragedy. Titanic, Titanic, Britannic, enclosed promenade. Ill fate might have followed them, but all the survivors were left with incredible stories to tell. So tell us, Brightsiders, would you have liked to have seen any... So tell us, Brightsiders. <laughs> okay, to everybody watching this premiere... Are we brightsiders? <laughs> uh, I'm not. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Any of these ships in real life? Let us know in the comments section. Don't forget. What they say? Let us know in the comments section. Don't forget to give this video a like, share it with your friends, and click subscribe to stay on the bright side. <laughs> stay on the bright side. Yeah. No. Okay. Glad that's over. Well, thank God that's over. So. Ultimately, my view of Brightside really hasn't changed that much. I will say they are getting more details right, but they're still getting a lot of details wrong. And the way they do these things or tell you these things, you will definitely get the wrong idea about the Titanic story and the Olympic and Britannic story if all you use is Brightside to get your facts. So once again, do not watch Brightside. I do not recommend them. I hope you guys enjoyed this bright side reaction video so uh i only do this for you guys so i mean if you guys find joy out of watching me die inside then okay consider it my gift to you this holiday season but anyway guys once again to everyone out there watching this video merry christmas happy holidays thank you guys so much for all the support you give to the historic travels youtube channel i definitely couldn't do this without all of you and yeah, guys, stay tuned for my next official Historic Travels video release. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. I've got um, quite a few things in the works. All right, everybody. Well, hey, y'all take care. Special thanks to my captain-level Patreon supporter, Tammy Lee. Thank you so much for all the support.